did. You mentioned there's a difference between, and I want to make sure I get this right and how I word this or how you worded it. You said there's a difference between want to and how to. How do you, oh, yeah. how, how do you, how do you help people see that? Man, I mean, <clears throat> one of the things you got to ask is what, what Jesus asked this paralytic man. The simplicity and depth of this question is unbelievable. So he's been laying there for 38 years in a mess. And Jesus says, do you want to be healed? And you think, well, of course he wants to be healed, Jesus. That's why he's hanging out at the, at the angel stirring pool, right, with all these other people. But it's a legitimate question because some people don't want to be healed. They don't. I mean, I see it all the time. They don't want their marriage to be healed. They don't want that. They don't want that trauma that they experienced when they were a kid. They don't want the healing of Christ because if, because if they're healed, then it takes, sometimes it takes away their identity because that's who I am. I'm the victim. Or one of the biggest things is it'll take away their excuse for bad behavior. Well, then what can I blame for my outburst of anger and me screaming at my kids all the time if I'm whole and healed and I have the peace of the Lord? Or how can I how can I explain the poor decisions that I make if I'm actually a healed person? And so one of the primary questions is just to ask people what Jesus asked. Do you want to be healed? Do you think that a lot of the issues that we're facing today is the fact that people don't want to be? I mean, we know that anxiety is at an all-time high, medication's at an all-time high. It seems that everybody is a victim. I mean, it's it's out competing on who is the greater victim and what they've gone through in these traumas. Not not to downplay trauma. I mean, we, we're glad to be able to address trauma, but how do you differentiate between legit trauma and people just living in their victimhood? Uh, I think there's a difference between like being broken and being wounded. Hmm. I mean, you know, God loves a broken and contrite heart because, I mean, Jesus kicks off the Sermon on the Mount with blessed are the poor in spirit. So when you realize you live in a sinful world and whether people have done bad things to you or even if you made stupid decision, but, you know, if you've been traumatized and you come to the Lord and you say, I am spiritually bankrupt. Jesus says, congratulations. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. You're like this close to being saved. Because then you bring that to him and you, you, you come to him and say, I need, to, I need you to do for me what nobody else can do for me. Like even the people that hurt me can't make things right. You can't go back in the past and give back your innocence. You can't even do that. So creator of all things, savior, I need you to do for me what no one else on the planet can do for me. So the crazy, I don't mind trying to get political here, but man, when you begin to bring in really these like kind of Marxist ideas that this is all power structures and you are, you identify yourself based on these number of markers and whoever has the most negative markers wins in regards to the most oppressed and the, that kind of power structure that versus Romans five, you were either a child of Adam or you're a child of Jesus. That's it. You choose. These are, these are like, they could not be more opposite religions. They couldn't be more opposite religions. One is I am sitting and identifying in who I am, whether it's my skin color or my orientation or whatever it is, man, my political party. And one is I am crucified with Christ. It's not even me who lives anymore, but Christ who lives in me. My primary identity is a son or a daughter of the king. These are, they, they couldn't be more different. So if you begin to identify in what has happened to you or what you've done or who you like or whatever, then to move away from that is to surrender your life. I mean, that is your God. That is what defines you. And the fundamental premise of the gospel is, is not self-identification. It's self-denial. To say, no, 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 man. Jesus is my Lord. I do what he tells me to do. I am who he says I am. And, and there is a dividing line in our culture right now between those two things. 